And as ever, we're going to start off with the inner solar system and work our way out into the universe from there. So let's start with Mercury. Uh, it's best seen at the start of February when it's visible in the evening sky. It sets about 70 minutes after the sun on the 1st of February. Uh, but at magnitude 1.4, I'm afraid it's not very bright. And this time it will be quite difficult to locate it, especially if you live in a city. Yeah, uh, it's not it's, it's not ideal, is it? Uh, no. no 1.4. <laughs> but it does, um, it reaches inferior conjunction on the 8th of February. Um, and then it re-emerges into the morning sky and it will be close to that close pair of planets Jupiter and Saturn um, over the last half of the month but unfortunately it's not that's not a good part of the sky in at this time of year is it because the ecliptic angle is quite shallow so they don't get up very high no, and as I say, I think if you live in a town or a city, it's probably going to be quite difficult because you'll need to get a, a clear horizon, really, to, to be able to see it. Um, moving further out, uh, planet Venus, uh, magnitude minus 3.9, so very bright. A bit oh, brighter, Jason, yeah. <laughs> a bit brighter in the morning sky, but unfortunately... Due to the same problems you've just mentioned, Pete, the shallow ecliptic angle, uh, it's quite poorly positioned. Uh, and Venus is now moving rapidly back towards the sun. That's right. Uh, where yeah. it'll have a, a superior conjunction in a couple of months. So, I think it's uh, next month, isn't it? 20, the 25th of March, something like that? So, yes, it's not not far away. Uh, it's it's not too far away. It is in March, so we're losing Venus as well. And uh, shortly after that, it will reappear in the evening sky. But it's going to take some time to become prominent again. It's um, there's one thing worth mentioning that Venus and Jupiter will be 31 arc minutes apart 